In this video, we are going to talk about classification of salts. Salts. What's the first thing that comes to our mind when we hear salts? This one, right? This is an indispensable entity in the kitchen and an essential component of what makes our food so good. This is common salt, also called sodium chloride. Well, that's what we call it chemically. And if you zoom into a crystal of this sodium chloride, what do you see? You will see this beautiful alternating arrangement or pattern of sodium and chloride entities. Now, most of the salt that we use at home is actually obtained or harvested from seawater by evaporation or they are mined from salt deposits underground. But did you know that we can also make or prepare the salt in the laboratory using a simple chemical reaction? In fact, you might be already familiar with this chemical reaction. It is called neutralization. Neutralization is a chemical reaction where an acid and a base react with each other to form salt and water. Now, depending on the acid and the base that are reacting with each other, they could end up cancelling each other's properties completely or partially. So before we go any further, let's take a short recap on the properties or the nature of these reacting species, the acid and the base, okay? Now you must all remember that acids are sour in taste. And what about bases? Bases are bitter in taste. And we also know that when we place a blue litmus paper in an acid or an acidic solution, it would turn red. And the bases would do the exact opposite, right? When you place a red litmus paper in a base or a basic solution, it would turn blue. So, when we mix an acid with a base in the right amounts, they tend to neutralize each other's effects, giving us salt and water. Now, if this mixing cancels both the acidic and the basic properties entirely, we would end up getting a neutral solution, a solution that is neither acidic nor basic. For example, in the neutralization reaction of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, what we end up getting is a neutral solution of sodium chloride and of course water. Now a small thing that you need to remember here is folks, neutralization is a hot reaction which means this reaction would produce a lot of heat so you have to be careful if you are doing this in a laboratory. Wear protective gloves and make sure that you are doing it under the teacher's supervision, alright? Alright, so what did we get here? We got a neutral solution of sodium chloride, correct? But how do we know for sure if what we got here is actually a neutral solution? Well, again, you don't need to take my word for it. You can check it yourselves. All you need to do is take a few drops of this salt solution in a small beaker or a petri dish and then place a litmus paper. Let's first place blue litmus paper and then red litmus paper and what do we observe here? we would see that there would be no change in color. Yes, both the red litmus and the blue litmus paper will not change color and this once again confirms the neutral nature of a salt solution. And if you go one step further and decide to heat the salt solution, what do you think would happen? Well, firstly, all the water in it would just evaporate and boil off, right? until eventually we are left with these white crystals of sodium chloride salt. And this, my friends, is a common salt which is a neutral salt. We have obtained this by heating a neutral solution of sodium chloride and what we get is a neutral salt. And it is this neutral salt that we use extensively in cooking and also as a preservative to keep our food from spoiling. But wait a minute, this is not always the case. Not every salt you see around is neutral. Some salts make red litmus paper turn blue and these salts are called basic salts. On the other hand, we have salts or salt solutions that turn blue litmus paper red and these salts are called acidic salts. For example, when a base like ammonia reacts with an acid like hydrochloric acid, the resulting ammonium chloride salt is acidic, which means a salt solution of ammonium chloride would turn blue litmus paper red. And do you know where we actually use this? In dry cells and batteries. Yes, ammonium chloride is an integral part of our dry cells which are used in all kinds of remotes or radio, wall clocks, flashlights, toys and so on. 
Another example of an acidic salt is copper sulfate that is obtained from the neutralization reaction of base copper hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Now the caveat here is that while copper sulfate is chemically an acidic salt and will turn blue litmus paper red, you will not see a sharp change in the color of the litmus paper because copper sulfate is kind of a weakly acidic salt. And what do we use copper sulfate for? Copper sulfate is used as a fungicide. It is sprayed on plants to prevent fungal infections. Basically, it acts like a shield on the plant, stops the fungi from infecting leaves and fruits. So we've talked about neutral salts and acidic salts. What about basic salts? Well, we know that basic salt solutions would turn red litmus paper blue, right? And one of the most common basic salts that we use in our everyday lives is sodium carbonate. And you know where we use it? In our detergents. Sodium carbonate, also called washing soda, is used in our detergent powders to help remove stains from clothes. And this salt is formed by the neutralization reaction of sodium hydroxide base and carbonic acid. Another basic salt is baking soda or sodium hydrogen carbonate and from the name itself you can figure out where we would be using it, right? Yes, in bakeries and confectionaries to make fluffy cakes and cookies. Now here's an interesting fact for you. Both baking soda as well as washing soda, both of these basic salts are prepared from the same set of acid base pair. Yes. Both of them are prepared from the neutralization reaction of sodium hydroxide and carbonic acid. So you might be wondering how is it that you have same reactants but we are getting different products, right? different basic salts. Well that depends on the extent of completion of the reaction. If this reaction gives us partial neutralization, in that case we get baking soda and complete neutralization would give us washing soda. Now we'll learn more about partial and complete neutralization in your higher classes. But for now, let's quickly summarize what we learned in this video. To summarize, we learned that salts can be prepared by the neutralization reaction where acids and bases react to form salt and water. We also saw that they can be classified into acidic, basic and neutral salts depending on the type of the acid and base that are reacting with each other. And we also looked at the various uses and examples of these salts, examples like ammonium chloride and copper sulfate, washing soda and baking soda for basic salts and common salt, a neutral salt which is basically the king of our kitchen, right? So the next time you sprinkle salt or do your laundry, remember you're working with chemistry in action.